We have an excellent show in store for you today. Stay tuned for more. Hey Hamlin, my name is Claire and I'm here to break down the results of Give to the Max Day for you. As I'm sure many of you know, Give to the Max Day is essentially a 24-hour donation period to raise support for Minnesota nonprofits. On November 14th, more than 160 people contributed to Hamlin, bringing our final total for dollars raised to 33000 which is more than $6,000 over last year's total. The funds go to the area or department specified by the donor. If an area wasn't specified, the gift is directed towards enhancing the student experience through scholarships and financial aid, hands-on learning experiences like research, and maintaining strong academic programs across all disciplines. During the contribution period, the Give Minnesota website actually crashed, and presumably this was due to the overwhelming amount of donations coming in. Although this speaks a message of exemplary Minnesota nice and generosity, the crash is believed to unfortunately have had a negative effect on the final results. Despite the website issues over a five-hour period, Hamlin University's development and alumni relations offices were pleasantly surprised by the successful totals and are enthusiastic about how the gifts will help support current and future students. Thank you to everyone who donated. On Friday, November 8th, Hellman hosted alumnus Roger H. Appledorn for the annual K. Malmstrom Lecture in Physics. Appledorn is an alumnus of 1957 and an innovator in the field of physics. He holds 35 U.S. patents and has worked at the 3M Corporation for over four decades developing technologies in microreplication and optics. Appledorn's lecture focused on the subject of what it takes to be an innovator. The K. Malmstrom Lectures began in 1992 as annual symposiums on contemporary issues in research and physics. Hellman has hosted a variety of speakers, including alums and Nobel laureates. On this segment of Words with Rodell, we're walking around the Anderson Center Forum and seeing what you Pipers are thankful for for Thanksgiving. I'm Miko Taylor and I'm thankful for friendships at Hamlin. I am Alex Gross and I'm thankful for the cold weather coming. Um, I just can't wait for the snow and the beautiful whiteness all over the place and it'll be nice when all the trees are covered in snow. That's what I'm thankful for. I'm Deanna Smith and I'm thankful for my friends always having my back. My name is Callie Grover and I'm thankful for Starbucks and my mom. I'm Kelly Chandler and I'm thankful for all my friends and family. I'm Tyler Stahl and what I'm thankful for is the wonderful Hamlin community and for my new job as a tutor for the St. Paul Public Libraries. Summer of 2011, I traveled to Rwanda for two weeks with a high school group. And in May term 2012, took 12 students to Rwanda on a study abroad. One of the places that they identified was the Gashora Girls Academy for Science and Technology. It was a new high school, um, very selective for, for students from across the country. And we met with the headmaster, we had lunch with the students. Hamlin's got to figure out a way to provide a scholarship for one of these girls. Depending on who you listen to, I mean, the average annual income in Rwanda is between $500 and $1,000, depending on what data you use, how you analyze the data. It doesn't really matter, 500 or or 1000 still not very much, and no one is going to be coming to Hamlin when that's the kind of income they have. Um, and these girls are exceptional. I mean, they, our students were so blown away by their commitment to their studies and the, the number of hours they put in in a day and the conditions that they live in, you know, are willing to live in to, you know, to be able to attend the school. And by that I mean like sometimes the water didn't work <laughs> and when it did it was often cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and our students were just, wow. We had pretty much managed working, of course, with people across the university administration to put in place a scholarship opportunity, put together a committee, um, identified the recipient, and then I had the good fortune to be able to travel to present the scholarship to the young woman who had been selected. The Hamlin Bookstore has a new book club called the Purple Onion Club with some historical significance. This building used to house uh, the Pe Purple Onion Pizza Parlor. It used to be 
uh, that Bob Dylan used to play here. And, and I just immediately sort of latched onto that. How cool is that? And when we um, entered the upper floor, which is now our general merchandise sales floor, the state of sort of construction that the building was in at that time, they'd removed the salon flooring and it was just the wood flooring underneath. And you could see the um, where the bar stools were and where the sort of horseshoe-shaped bar was. You could see the marking on the wood floor. So I just immediately fell in love with the whole idea of the Purple Onion Pizza Parlor and um, uh, felt that that was just such a huge portion of the history of this building and um, wanted to keep that alive, sort of. So hence the name, um, the Purple Onion Book Club. The Purple Onion Club focuses on local authors. Anyone who is interested is welcome to join. And to learn more, visit the bookstore. Hey Piper fans, I'm Zach Lemire, here to let you know what's going on in Hamlin Athletics. The Hamlin women's volleyball team unfortunately saw their Cinderella season come to an end as they lost their first round playoff matchup against the College of St. Benedict on Tuesday, November 5th. Despite this loss, it was still a great season for the Piper volleyball team, as while in the preseason coaches poll they were picked to finish 11th in the conference, they ended up making it to the playoffs and finishing in 6th. They also had three athletes named to the All-Mayak team, as seniors Sam Greeny Hamlin and Molly Hurley and junior Lindsey Reimer were named All-Conference. Hamlin's men's and women's swimming and diving teams participated in the annual Hour of Power on Tuesday, November 12th. The Hour of Power is an annual event that was started in 2006 in honor of former Carlton swimmer Ted Mullen, who unfortunately passed away from synovial cell sarcoma that year, a rare form of soft tissue cancer. The event consists of one hour of continuous relay swimming as fast as you can go, following Ted's personal philosophy of leave it all in the pool. The event also acts as a fundraiser for sarcoma research, and in its first seven years, the Hour of Power has raised over $410,000 to benefit this research. For more information on Hamlin Athletics, you can visit hamlinathletics.com, you can like Hamlin Athletics on Facebook, you can follow us on Twitter at HUPipers, and use the hashtag GoHU.